Hey, this is Ryan from Rocket SaaS, and you're listening to the SaaS Marketing Weekly Podcast, the show that gives you actionable marketing strategies and campaign ideas to rocket your SaaS business. And if you want even more SaaS marketing ideas, go to sasmarketingweekly.com to join my free newsletter. Hello there, welcome back to another episode of SaaS Marketing Weekly with me, your host Ryan, the founder of Rocket SaaS, and today we're going to be talking about retargeting ads. On last week's episode of the pod, I gave you the top five reasons as to why I scaled my business from zero to £100,000 in monthly recurring revenue. The second thing on the list after demand generation was retargeting ads. So I thought I'd make this pod to dive a little bit deeper into retargeting ads. What is it? Why is it so effective? Why are all scaling SaaS companies using it? And also my four-step approach to retargeting ads that you can implement into your business. If you do it right with the right content and a little bit of patience, you can unlock massive growth. It's also a great philosophy to understand about marketing because it is essentially a funnel and once you've figured out how the funnel works your content is going to start to have more impact your ads are going to work you're going to get more mqls turning into sqls and you're just going to start generating leads and sales it's going to feel like on autopilot once you've got these funnels flowing and retargeting ads is the quickest fastest way to make this all happen so what are retargeting ads most people first came across retargeting ads in the B2C world. So let's say you were on the Adidas website and you checked out this pair of Adidas trainers and suddenly you start seeing this pair of Adidas trainers all over the web. You go on Facebook on the right hand side, those exact same trainers in the exact same color. What are they doing here on Facebook? And you go onto another website and they're there again, haunting you until you eventually make that purchase. I remember when I started seeing those, it feels like 10 years ago now, might be less. But everyone started talking about it. It's like, have you seen that thing? These products keep following me around. And that was a big shift in marketing technology. I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's kind of where it started. It certainly feels that way to me. And then B2B started to catch up, as it often does, versus B2C. B2C often lead the way in marketing and B2B eventually catches up and the same tactics unsurprisingly work. But it's a similar principle. Someone comes onto your website, then the next time they go on their LinkedIn or their Instagram or their Facebook, whether it's the next day, it could be the next week, it could be for the next months, they will start to see advertisements for your business. So it all works with cookies. When you go onto somebody's website, a little cookie is added to your browser. It's totally anonymous. They don't know exactly who you are, but that website knows that you visited the site. So it can then serve you specific ads again. So I'm not going to go into the complete technicalities and the privacy of the whole thing. I'm just going to explain to you how it works and how you can implement it into your business. So the basic way to do retargeting ads, which I imagine a lot of you have done before, you create some ads that say how fantastic your product is, book a demo today, and you show it to people that you know visited your website already. So that's like the most basic one-layered approach to retargeting ads. That's certainly a start, and I recommend that every business should at least be doing that. But today I'm going to go through a more of a multi-layered four-step approach that I implement to our clients here at Rocket SaaS, which is far more effective. So my strategy involves creating four sets of ads, and I'm going to go through each of them. The first set of ads it's what we call the problem aware ads. Then the second set is solution aware, followed by vendor aware, followed by most aware. Now I didn't make those up. That's a pretty common philosophy in marketing in terms of a funnel. Problem, solution, vendor, most. Most being most aware of you. That's a typical funnel that people will flow down and you can get people to flow through that journey using retargeting ads. So let's now talk about each of those four sections and what ads you need to create for each of those layers. So set one, problem aware ads. These are the ads that you want to show to a cold audience. These are the ads that are being shown to people that have not yet been to your website. They may have not ever heard of your brand before. So it's completely cold. What you do not want to be doing at this stage, where I see so many businesses waste millions and millions of pounds, is showing solution aware ads to these people. Solution aware is step two. You have to wait. So do not show solution aware ads to a cold audience an example of that is saying we're a great product book a demo today or we're leading industry backup software book a free trial today showing those sorts of ads to a cold audience that have never heard from you before are completely unaware of your brand 
they are highly unlikely to click on that and do the call to action that you want them to do. They don't know you. They don't like you. They don't trust you. They've even heard of you before. Why would I book a demo with someone I've never heard of? You need to warm me up a little bit. So how do you do that with ads? The answer is you create problem aware ads. So you create ads that are not promoting your product or solution at all. Instead, they are helping your target audience solve a problem that they've got on their mind. So the goal of these ads is not to generate leads. The goal is purely to get brand awareness, to get engagement, to get people clicking on it. That's all we're looking for in this first stage of the retargeting funnel. So to give you some examples of what type of ad it could be, it could be just a normal image advert. And when you click on it, it leads to a blog article, which teaches your audience how to solve a problem. It could be a similar type advert leading to an ebook, or it could be a video, just like a two minute talking head video of you giving a tip on how someone can solve an issue in their industry. Or it could be an advert for a webinar or an assessment tool, something like that. And to give you a real life example, I'm looking right now at an advert from monday.com. It's just a flat image graphic leading to an ebook. It says five growth trends for SaaS marketplace app developers in 2024. And it's leading to a free ebook download. It's got a small monday.com logo on it, but that's about it in terms of promoting the brand. It's just an article teaching you growth trends on how you can grow your SaaS marketplace app. So if I was a SaaS marketplace app developer, I think, oh, great some growth trends. I'm interested in reading this article, this ebook. I'm going to click on that because the mindset is, oh, I'm not being sold to. It doesn't even look like an advert. It looks like something that's trying to help me. Brilliant. I'll click on that. Or if it was a video, I'll watch that video. Or if it's a webinar, I'll sign up for that webinar. Another example would be, let's say you're a data backup provider SaaS platform. You could create articles, guides, videos, ebooks, assessment tools, teaching people how to back up their own data. Or maybe doing a little bit of scaremongering. Did you know there's a scary new virus that's just come out? Click here to learn all about it and how to protect your business from it. So those sorts of ads, those educational, helpful tips that you're giving people, those ads are going to get a lot more engagement than your sales ads. Those sorts of ads are going to get a ton more clicks, likes, even comments. But it's mainly going to be clicks than you would get if you were just saying, oh, we're a great backup product, book a demo today. And the beauty of those clicks that you're going to get is you know that those clicks are going to come from the people that you want to sell to. I've not talked about ad targeting so far on this podcast, but let's presume that your ad targeting is on point. You're using LinkedIn ads to show these ads to the right job title, the right company size in the right location, talking about the problem that your product solves. So if the right target audience are clicking they're basically saying to you without revealing their identity i'm interested in the problem that you solve i'm interested in protecting my business and my business's data i want to learn about that problem so if those people are willing to click on blogs and ebooks and webinars then you can be pretty confident as long as they can afford it that they're also interested in your solution so this is when we get into step two of the retargeting ads that we call solution aware ads so with the magic of retargeting You can do this on LinkedIn and in Meta. You can say, take all of those people that engaged with my problem aware ads, now show them this second set of ads. So you don't show the second set of ads to a cold audience. You only show the second set of ads to the people that engage with the first set of ads. So when I say engaged, it's people that either clicked on it to visit the website. Maybe they filled out a form if it was a native form ad, or it could even be videos are really good for retargeting because you can even say, show my second set of ads to anybody that watched 60% of my video in my first ad set. Or it could be someone that commented, shared the ads, even pressed the carousel button, you know, those LinkedIn carousels. That even counts as someone that was interested because they scroll through a carousel. So these second sets of ads in terms of content, this is now when you want to be introducing your solution. You want to be introducing your solution, your software, and the benefits of it. And I find that facts and stats are highly effective with these types of ads. So I'm now looking at a MailChimp ad. It's got an image of the platform. It's got like an automation workflow, like an email nurturing sequence. It's got the MailChimp logo nice and big at the top, nice bright yellow branding. And the text simply says, get up to seven times more orders with automated journeys. Start your free trial. So with MailChimp, putting that into retargeting, They know that they're not like scattergunning their call to action advert to a cold audience of hundreds of thousands or millions of people that may not be interested. They know they're only showing this advert to a select group of people that are interested in solving the problem. 
because their previous ad would have been leading to a blog about how to create email automation journeys or how to scale your business through email marketing, that kind of thing. So you can create lots of ads in this layer. I like to create ads about each feature that the product has got each benefit. You can also have multiple spokes of your retargeting funnel. So you can say, for example, only show these ads about how our product really helps construction companies. Only show that to people that work within construction companies and have also engaged with my first set of ads. So you can start to spin off at this point into different funnels based on different job titles, industries, locations, but don't get too complicated here. The point is that your second layer of ads should now be introducing the product. Don't be too aggressive with the calls to action. That's coming later. Don't just have a book of free demo, capital letters type ad. You want to be introducing your features, the benefits, using facts, using stats. And hopefully you will start to get a few leads at this point. You know these people have visited your website, they've checked out your content, now they're being introduced to your solution. So yeah, you should start to get a few leads at this point. It doesn't always happen on layer two. Layer three and four is typically where it happens. So moving on to layer three, vendor aware ads, or what I call social proof ads. This is often where I get the most leads of my campaigns. So you should understand the flow by now. People have clicked on the first set of problem aware ads. They've then been retargeted to the second set of ads, introducing the solution. They've engaged with those ads, but they still haven't booked a demo. So now we start showing them the third set of ads, which is social proof ads. So ads all about case studies and testimonials. So there's typically three types of social proof ads that I go for. One is a testimonial. For LinkedIn ads, I like to keep it short and sweet. Testimonials are sometimes really long. I always like to trim them down for ads. Try and keep it below 15 words. Just take out the best 15 words or just like rewrite it as long as your client signs it off. So rather than waffling on about how amazing you are, which usually happens, which is nice, but for ads, it needs to be short and sweet. So try and get that down to like 10, 15 words. Testimonial ads are so much more genuine when you've got the real person's photo. So again, get their permission, get their photo on there, get their name, job title. If they're from a well-known company, it'd be great to get their company logo on there as well. So just have those as image ads. The other one is also image ads that can work as carousels quite nicely too which is case studies so showing results this company grew revenue by x percent since working with us then you, another slide that tells you another statistic of how they grew another statistic another statistic as you keep going through the carousel finishes with a testimonial then as a book a demo button they work really well but the most effective type of vendor aware ads are video ads so ask your customer success team or do it yourself you want to start interviewing some of your happiest customers so make a list of your happiest customers, email all of them and say, hey, would you mind just jumping on a 10 minute call with me? I just want to do a really quick testimonial slash case study about the success that you've had from working with us. Do you mind if I record it and I can turn it into some LinkedIn content? That'd be amazing. It would really help me grow my business. Most people, if they're nice and they're happy with your service, are going to say yes. Jump on a call with them, record it. I'd recommend recording it with Riverside as it's a much more higher quality output as opposed to Zoom or Google Meets. Just ask them some questions like, how was your business struggling before you met us? Why did you choose to work with us? What were your favorite features? What the results that your business has had since working with us? And you're just getting these great snippets. And then you can use a tool called Opus Clip, where you just upload the video to Opus Clip and it'll kind of automatically use a bit of AI magic to just split your video into lovely little segments. It'll add to subtitles as well. I'm sure you've seen similar clips on LinkedIn. And then boom, you've got these amazing little clips that are fantastic for lots of different content areas. But today we're obviously talking about LinkedIn retargeting ads. And this is great content for layer three. So someone's checked out your content, learned about the problem that you solve. They're now familiar with your platform. Now they start seeing videos of your happy customers saying how amazing your product is. You can see the mindset now. People are really starting to think, I need to book a demo with these guys. So we see a lot of demos getting booked on these types of ads. But we don't stop there. The final set of ads, the most aware ads they're called, or the call to action ads, as I call them, this is where you start being a little bit more aggressive with the call to action. It's, you're kind of saying, come on, you've been to our website, you've read our content, you understand what our solution is, you've even seen case studies from our happy customers. What are you waiting for? Let's go, book a demo book a free trial. So you don't need to go into too much detail about the benefits or the problems that you solve or the features. It's a bit more direct. So I'm looking at one now from Panda Docs. It's a very short headline. It says, automate quotes, eliminate errors, book a demo with Panda Docs today. So that's the sort of thing you need. I think for this set of ads, I usually go for just image. Don't usually go for video. Don't usually go for carousel. Just a pretty simple image 
with a real strong benefit statement and a book a demo or book a free trial. So those are the four sets of ads that you need to create. You can do these retargeting flows through LinkedIn and Meta ads as well. You can also do retargeting ads with Google Display ads. I rarely have much success with Google Display ads, to be honest. So today's advice is pretty much all about LinkedIn and Meta ads. In terms of how many ads you should be creating for each layer, it really is a case of the more the better because you can A-B test and you can start to learn what works. But I'd go for at least five per layer. So it's four layers, five per layer is 20 ads. That's enough ads for each layer to understand what is working, which ad is rising to the top, what messaging are people resonating with most, what ads do we need to scrap. You should always have at least five different ads circulating in each of those layers. So I think that pretty much covers the basics of retargeting ads. I actually made a guide a while ago. It's a free guide. It's not gated at all. If you go to my website, rocket-sas.io forward slash retargeting, that's rocket-sas.io forward slash retargeting. You can download my guide, which basically talks you through everything that I've been through today with a kind of visual infographic to help you understand it better. There's also a video walkthrough that I give you to explain it in even more detail. But if you enjoyed this episode, if you want to dive a little bit deeper, I recommend you go to that page, download the guide, and it'll give you a little bit more context. Or alternately, if you haven't got time, you don't want to do it yourself, you'd rather hire someone else to do it for you, that's what me and my agency can do for you. Retargeting ads is pretty much the most important thing that we do for all of our clients, I would say. I shouldn't say most important, but I don't think any of our clients would get any results without it. Like we create great content as well. We create great landing pages to convert, but retargeting is such a critical cog in the machine. You can have great content, you have great website, great landing pages, but without those retargeting ads, it can be a very slow burn. And my clients are fast growth SaaS companies. They want to grow fast. So you have to spend money on ads. There's no faster way to go from startup to quick growth than ads. And if you're doing ads, you have to be doing retargeting ads. So if you want to chat to me and my agency about how we can help you do that, just yeah, go onto our website, rocket-sas.io. You can request a free strategy call with me. You can check out our pricing and I'll be happy to chat, give you a proposal. But thank you so much for listening. If you've enjoyed this episode and other episodes, I'd be really grateful if you could give us a five-star review wherever you're listening. That really helps scale the pod. So thanks again and see you next week.